why the U.S. has created this designation as a terrorist organization is J. Peter Fahm. He's the director of the Atlantic Council's Africa Center. Let me ask you this. Why do you think the U.S. decided to do this now? I mean, we've had so many reports over the last year or so of these attacks. And the, clearly, this organization's been out there doing this sort of work for quite a while. Why now? Uh, you're exactly right, Mike. Uh, in fact, it was two years ago this month that I testified before a congressional hearing saying that this was a terrorist group and it was clearly metastasizing to something more dangerous and need to be recognized as such. So I guess better late than never. Uh, but the real question really is what effect will this designation of coming this late in the game really have? Although there certainly will be penalties for U.S. citizens who support this group either by joining it or providing it material support. This is a group that's better known for breaking into banks, not for having bank deposits. So there aren't likely to be many accounts that can be frozen. Furthermore, the majority of Nigerians in the diaspora, including almost all the Nigerians, a majority of them living in the U.S., are Southern Christians. They're the least likely people to be sending donations to this group. So I think the net effect is going to be relatively minimal. It's more symbolic, a gesture of support to the Nigerian government as it faces what is clearly a very dangerous uh, group that is destabilizing the northern half of that country. As a person who goes and testifies on Capitol Hill and sits there and waits and waits and waits, how frustrating was it for you that it's taken this long? Well, it's, I think it's been frustrating that the, a lot of old information was at work. Uh, this, this is a group, it's sort of like a zombie, if I may use that metaphor. Uh, the Nigerians thought they destroyed it in 2003. In 2009, they thought they wiped it out. But each time it came back with an iteration that was actually more virulent, more dangerous. And the current group in its current incarnation actually has linkages to foreign terrorist groups, including al-Qaeda in the Islamic Maghreb, which is provided with training. There's very credible evidence that some of the fighters also received training with al-Shabaab in Somalia. So this is a group that has linkages across Africa. It's very dangerous. And better late than never, I'm glad that there's recognition of the very real threat instead of for so long downplaying it. If there are folks out there who are not familiar with their MO and, and how they work, how would you describe it to them? This is a group that grew out of some rather esoteric beliefs, uh, certainly are not mainstream, but as it is linked with these foreign terrorist groups, it's shed a little bit of its Nigerian character, taken on the rhetoric, the symbols, and the causes of foreign jihadists. So it's becoming more of a foreign-oriented organization. Its reach within Nigeria is still very small, but because of the clumsiness of the government's efforts to crack down on it, the human rights abuses which have been alleged, which your correspondent spoke about earlier, uh, and the fact that northern Nigeria is suffering severe economic depression. It's falling behind the rest of the country. It's feeling marginalized politically and economically. These are not reasons that cause terrorism, but they create an enabling environment where a group like this gets traction. Why is it that students often are the targets of them? Because we do find that in universities and that sort of thing. And not just students, but very often students, ironically, in the sciences, uh, they're looking for certainty. They don't like nuance. And this is a group that offers black and white solutions to everything. They're also responding to frustrations of students in many of these countries where you may get a degree, but that degree doesn't really empower you to participate in the economy or in the political sphere in the country because there's really no opening for up-and-comers to get involved, so they're looking for something, so they provide an easy answer. It's not a real answer, but for many of these young people, unfortunately, by the time they learn that, it's too late. Peter, thanks so much for your time. Really appreciate it. Thank you.